Tiger King, the story of Joe Exotic, a man with a roadside zoo in um, Oklahoma, gets into, I mean, I can't even begin to tell you what the story is about. At the end of the day, for those of you who have not seen it, he had a zoo. He got in trouble. He lost the zoo. What happened to the Tigers? We've got a report tonight from uh, Denver 7's Liz Gillardi has more for us. 30 minutes outside of Denver, a beautiful place to enjoy the view. And some sounds you might not expect in Colorado. Goodness. This is the wild animal sanctuary in Kingsburg. Maybe you recognize these tigers. They're kind of famous. So these are four cats that we got. Um, my goodness. Um, from GW Exotics. This is Thomas. Boys. This is Clay, um, Daniels, and Enzo. GW Exotics. And nobody's going to tell me any otherwise. Now in Joe Exotics Animal Park, the one featured in the popular Netflix series Tiger King. We don't want to give away the ending, but let's just say Joe parts ways with the tigers. This Colorado sanctuary stepped in to rescue them. It's not about the Netflix film. It's not about anything other than we just are trying to give them the best life possible. 39 tigers and three bears from Joe's Oklahoma Zoo live here now. The staff saw firsthand what the conditions were like when they picked up the animals in late 2017. The small enclosures, the indiscriminate breeding, the cub experiences, the exploitation. Um, so all of that was very apparent when we were on the rescue. We asked how the tigers are doing and we think they really, <laughs> really wanted to be interviewed. And just provide, <laughs> provide them. <laughs> Clay, my goodness. Because they wouldn't stop. So really? <laughs> interrupting us. You know, try and provide them with as many freedoms that people unfortunately tried to take away from them. Um, and while we're stuck inside binge watching Tiger King, coronavirus concerns have forced the wild animal sanctuary to close its gates to visitors. Well, we sure hope that people come out and visit and still get to experience the sanctuary when that time comes and it's safe for the nation. The tigers will be here just outside of Denver, enjoying their new life one with more space and more freedom. I think that hopefully it brings some light to, to the crisis that we're in with large exotics in this nation. Um, I hope that people, you know, don't just take from the documentary the sensationalism of the characters. They actually look beyond it now and see the animals. Yeah, there's a lot more to the story. Obviously, there's legal aspects to it, but a lot of folks are wondering about this tiger. So let's bring her in. Fantastic reporter from Denver 7, Liz Gillardi, joins us live. Liz, great to see you. Um, Thank you so much. Let's start here. How do, you how do you transport 39 of those big cats from Oklahoma out to Denver? Oh, I know, and it was an undertaking for them. Um, I don't think they had a lot of notice, but they went out in 2017 uh, two different times, the first time in November of uh, 2017 to pick up 19 sets of uh, tigers from Oklahoma, and they were called back just three weeks later, had to load them up, bring them to Colorado, and then they also had to acclimate those tigers to their new home here. Yeah, that can't be. I mean, it's a little bit, um, I, oh, I guess it's uh, a little bit colder, the altitude a little bit as well. Um, well, and they said the they get that question. Uh, folk? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just saying they said they get that question all the time. How did the Tigers like the altitude, the snow? They said they actually do pretty well here. Let me tell you, they have a gorgeous view from that new location. That's fantastic. Now, how about the conditions at the zoo? Because those rescue workers were able to go there and see it firsthand. We saw what was in the documentary. What did they experience? Well, and, you know, and that's what they said, too. They said, hey, long before this documentary was released, I mean, we saw firsthand what kind of conditions those tigers uh, were living in. I think the thing that was most appalling was just the really, really small enclosures, um, the facility, the sanctuary here, uh, big open spaces. The tigers are kind of free to do what they want and as they please, because there's not as much interaction with humans. But they said um, at Joe's uh, Zoo, uh, just really small cages, enclosures, um, maybe a cage that the staff at the Colorado Sanctuary would use 
just for transporting a tiger, but these were uh, cages that they were living in and, and spending their whole lives in. Yeah, I mean, a, a stark contrast. So it, what we're talking about here is, is the difference between what, sanctuaries and, and privately owned zoos. Big difference. A big difference indeed. And I mean, the sanctuary that we visited just outside of Denver, it's a nonprofit. They've been operating for 40 years. Um, they do, you know, get donations and they do allow visitors, uh, but very different uh, than what we saw in the documentary um, at Joe's Zoo uh, here in Colorado. The visitors are actually on this elevated platform uh, that goes around some of the enclosures. So they're able to you know, still see the animals, but they aren't, you know, right on top of them and, and making a lot of eye contact, which the staff at the sanctuary said is, is better for the animals, doesn't stress them out as much. Liz Gilardi from Denver 7, we really appreciate it. Stay safe. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, another spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the whole series yet, just put the earmuffs on for just a second. Um, there is a trial in this Netflix series. That's what we do at Court TV. We cover trials. Well, this one was in federal court, so there were no cameras permitted. But of course, the jury was there, and I had an opportunity to speak with one of those jurors. And one of the things we talked about is what we're talking about with Liz, which was the tigers themselves. The five tigers that um, were they focused on mostly in the trial. Um, so those five tigers were, I believe they were in three cages, if I remember correctly. And somebody wanted to board their tiger and he didn't have any room. So he pulled those tigers out and killed them to be able to board somebody else's tigers and make money. And um, he basically shot them in the head. I think that he did... Um, he did put them to, you know, have them fall asleep first, but then he shot them in the head. Um, and then when the vet testified, she said that she believed that all of those tigers were between, I think she said nine and 12 years old and they could live to be 17 or 18. And Joe's defense was that they were all old and he was doing them a favor. But they were all, they all had many years left to live and they were all healthy. So that's what he was doing was killing tigers to make money, you know, in that case, to make money to board somebody else's tigers. Fascinating insight into the trial that we didn't get to see because it was in federal court. Julie Grant back with us. Julie, um, the one Great motivator Julie. here throughout, which doesn't play well for, for Joe Exotic at trial or in, in you know, for anyone uh, thinking about uh, what he did here is money, money. You know, You're someone right. wants to board a tiger. He doesn't have room. So I got to kill a tiger to board a tiger. You're right, Vinny. Oftentimes in civil court, we see that theme play out of profits over people, companies looking to make money and, and, and human beings suffering as a result. We see that play out a lot of times in cases that go to civil court. And here it reminded me of this where they're saying, Joe Exotic was putting the profits over the animals that he supposedly loved. And I think any juror, I, I loved your interview with her, Benny. It was great. And I think anybody who's been a pet owner can just think about that experience. And when we think of a pet maybe being put down because it's the kind thing to do, that they're at the end of their life, that there is nothing but pain and suffering if, if they're existing. And, and you think about it being done maybe out of kindness or maybe the shooting being done because he didn't have the means to to do an injection uh, that would euthanize him. But here we, we heard the juror tell you how the, these tigers had many more years in their lives left. It wasn't that they were sick or dying. This was just about moving them out to make more room, to make more money. And you don't see kindness there. That love is lacking. So I think if he had an argument where he really lacked any other means to do it, and he was trying to spare them suffering or pain, maybe he could have prevailed. But here it sounds like that wasn't it at all. Sadly, it was money that uh, that that juror told you her words. He loves money. That was the evidence that money. they received about Joe Exotic. 
Absolutely. Now, the other part of the Netflix series is the sanctuary down in Florida, Carol Baskin, who is the victim of the plot of Joe Exotic. Um, I asked the juror to compare um, what she was doing with her animals and what Joe Exotic was doing with his big cats, because the way it's portrayed in the Netflix series is there's really not much of a difference between the two. Take a listen. No, that was actually something very big that I think that they left out of, of the docuseries was that um, everybody thinks that what they're doing is the same thing, and it really isn't because um, Carol Baskin doesn't breed tiger cubs to, um, or breed tigers to have cubs for petting sessions. And um, that was what I think the jury found so revolting about about Joe was that he only had a use for him for a few weeks out of their whole life. Well, Carol never did that. So, I mean, she did have, from what we could see, she had cages that were too small and, and things like that. And so she's not completely innocent in the whole thing. But I think the biggest difference is the tiger cubs and how he would use those to make money and she didn't she didn't do that at all you know julie when i think about you know and watching the series and seeing him and kind of studying his character i think he he needed money to keep the whole thing going but it was obvious that he's not a rich man i think he just loved the fame that came with being joe exotic and the only way he could continue to do it is to keep that that big cat uh uh you know, uh, zoo up and running. Right. I I'm with you, Vinny. Absolutely. I think so. And, and, and who knows, maybe I, I wouldn't, you have loved to sit in on this trial, right? I know, I know you would have my friend as, as I would have as well. And it's great to get this jurors insight, but yes, maybe fame could have been the theme because it seems like that's all that this guy wanted. That's all Joe exotic seemed to have wanted out of life was to become famous some way. You know, he tried the TV show. He was doing the touring with the pets, all that. And, and so, yes, I mean, and the sad thing is now he's in prison and very, very famous or infamous maybe we should say, but yes, I'm in agreement with you. Perhaps it was fame and uh, money was just the means to that fame, Vinny. Yeah, and, and there is some incredible irony. You think about it, this guy wanted fame so badly, he had tried to get it by locking up big cats, and the only way he got the fame is when he got locked up. Unbelievable. Julie Grant, yes. we're going to talk more about this 